Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bife here. Before we do anything, have you heard that once again there are a ton of spoilers this week? You should go and catch up on the seasonal story for yourself if you haven't. It takes you about 30 minutes, and uh, yeah, you should do it before you get spoiled. If you don't care about spoilers, keep watching of course, but for the rest of you, this is seriously a big spoiler warning. And while you're at it, get off YouTube and social media. Spoilers are everywhere and some people just don't care. Nothing is safe. This week, for just a moment, we're taking a break from the content schedule that I have in the background so that we can talk about the seasonal story, because this week is... I mean, damn, Bungie, it's big. I've seen a lot of mixed reactions to this one, and there's no major consensus to how this is, so I wanted to save my thoughts and opinions until the end of the video. Suffice to say, I hope this plot has legs and is going places. To start off with, though, as a recap for those of you who didn't know, in this season, our narrative has been all about saving the civilians being picked up and imprisoned by the Shadow Legion. We still don't know exactly what the purpose of the imprisonment of these civilians is, but when it comes to the plans of the Witness, nothing good can come from it. So we've been running interceptions for the last few weeks and rescuing all the people that we can. All of this is thanks to the powers of Mara Sov, which have allowed us to break through the barriers of the pyramid complexes on Earth and infiltrate them properly. Things were going pretty routinely. We've had successes and breakthroughs even with the further defensive measures implemented by the Shadow Legion. At first, they were simply trying to force us out with a Scion Commander. Then they decided to use an orbiting ship as a holding facility. Neither of these tactics worked and the team was growing closer and bolder. Given that both the Guardians and their mortal companions have all been gifted the title of Queensguard by Mara Sov, there's a new sort of camaraderie that has been fostered, particularly between Mithrax and Amanda Holiday. I haven't talked about it up to this point, but a great example of this can be seen in the new seasonal cutscene from this week. If you have seen this, feel free to skip, but if you haven't, take a moment to watch. It's the CG cutscene for this season, and it's pretty good, and you're sure to enjoy it. Hey, Guardian. We were just grabbing a little downtime. Gotta celebrate your successes, you know? Amanda told me we must not forget to kick it back. <laughs> oh, we have accomplished much and saved many lives. That's right. There's no I in team, but there is an A and an M. Please don't tell folks I said that. But yeah, we're a team. Any door I can't hack open, you splice through. We are in this together. It is a privilege to join you. You and the Vanguard welcomed us as honored guests in your city. Guests? The city is your home. When I first showed up at the gates, I felt like I belonged. And that's how it should be for everyone. I had thought you were born there. Nope. I got there later. Same as you. Amanda, you know our story, but I would very much like to hear yours. I grew up on the road. Long as I could remember, my family had been walking toward the last city. My mama told me we'd be safe there. She said that was all that mattered. But at the time, all that mattered to me were the jump ships in the sky above. I thought they were the greatest thing I'd ever seen. My folks tried their best, but the road's a dangerous place. When the House of Winter attacked, my mama fought them off best she could. Even killed a captain before they shot her. Pneumonia got my daddy not long after. I'd heard tales of people resurrected, chosen for immortality, but not them. They were just gone. When I finally reached the last city, I knew my mama was right. I'd be safe there. I was finally home. I learned to fly as soon as I could reach the stick. I never had powers like the Guardians or 
a ghost to resurrect me. But in the cockpit, I'm every inch as tough. Now, every time I fly, I remember where I came from and who I'm fighting for. And that's all that matters. Whilst this was most certainly something that was remarkable for the sake of understanding Amanda Holliday's story better, there was something else that was worth talking about from last week, something that pertains to this week. We saw a communication from a not-so-friendly face, Eramis, the Kel of the House of Salvation. She and Mithrax traded verbal jabs over the farm's comms, and the result of the conversation was intriguing. There was a strange kind of consensus. Take a listen. Mizrax Kel. Eramis, I have nothing to say to you. I spared your life and you used it to return to your hate and violence. I will not thank you for your mercy or ask for your forgiveness, but I am not your enemy. You spoke this way before. I do believed your lies then. I will not do so now. I saved your daughter's life. I know she is the future of the Elixni. But the machine spawn will never allow us that future. Again and again they cut us down. When we seek to unify our houses. When we seek power for ourselves. They will never see you as their equal. And you believe that we are equals? You bow to the witness and a god of the hive. We are the leaders of our people, and we must find power where we can. You did the same when you chose to live amongst those who have slaughtered us for centuries. I have ended that violence. It has not ended. You just live behind our enemy's walls. Your house relies on hope as much as mine does. I want us to be free, to be gentle and care for each other. I want us to be weavers and dancers again. That is why you did not kill me, because you want this as well. But until we control our own future, the Elixni will never be these things again. In this conversation, Eramis admits to something that she'd only really truly admitted in her heart so far. She admitted that there was a future for the Elixni in Mithrax's daughter Ido, and that both her and Mithrax were relics of the past, not quite suited to this new time of the future. The reference at the end, however, does show that Eramis's nostalgic spirit and her desire for the ways of old is still alive and healthy. Weavers and Dancers is a reference to the houses that Mithrax and her used to represent. Her former house, known to us as the House of Devils, were once known as a House of Dancers. Mithrax's former house, the House of Wolves, were once known as Gentle Weavers. This conversation is worth remembering considering what happens this week. At the start of it all, we get these communications from Amanda and then Devrim. Take a listen. Rally up, Guardian. I won't say we got the Shadow Legion on the ropes just yet, but we're making progress. I meant to ask, how are you handling all this Queen's Guard stuff? Only thing that's changed for me is that Crow bowed and asked if he should call me Lady Amanda of Holiday. I told him to call me whatever he wants. I'm just glad he's finally recognizing my natural authority. Anyway, I like how things have been shaking out lately. Tearing through magic planes to bust into a Shadow Legion ship uninvited? That's the kind of entrance Cade would have liked. <laughs> Enough talk. Let's get back out there. Guardian, I'm glad I caught you. Mithrax and Amanda are out on patrol and called for a touch of backup. Seems they picked up another distress signal, and the outpost is absolutely crawling with Shadow Legion. I was surprised they called it in. Makes me think the odds are worse than they're letting on. Usually those two can take care of themselves. I'm sending you their signal now. Head over and back them up, won't you? 
From here we begin the mission known as Operation Jailbreak, which is really, so far, the most massive story development this season. I'll go ahead and play the dialogue from this mission as well as the relevant cutscene in full. Before I do though, this is your final spoiler warning. Be prepared, a lot is about to change. Our scanners picked up a distress signal coming from a prison facility in the EDZ. We reckon it's a new bunch of captives. Mithrax and I are fixing to break them out. I can splice the base security, but we will need a route for escape. That's where you come in, Guardian. Clear all opposition that we may lead the prisoners to safety. And do not engage your Sparrow. The signal will alert our enemies. Everyone solid? Then let's go get our people back. Guardian, kick down their front door while we slip in the back. We'll meet you inside. Mizrax, I must speak with haste. Turn back now. This is not a fight you can win. You cannot share fear with us, Aramis, for the light provides. Leave these captives and live to see your great machine again. Pursue this quest and you will die. Mithrax? The ship stealer is allied with the voice in the darkness. But she does not speak lies. Perhaps there is something here we do not yet see. There's always something. I'm not leaving our people behind, no matter what. And I am with you. I think I found us an LZ, Guardian. We're going in through the roof. This was not the plan, Amanda Holiday. Are you certain the ship will fit? Well, only one way to find out. Spider hated when I did things like this. Now, I see why. And we're in. Next round's on you, Mithrax. Amanda and I will now locate the security terminal. Deal with those armored units and we'll meet you on the other side. I see you, Guardian. I'm in the surveillance room above. I'm splicing the security network now. I will soon locate the captives. Hot damn, Guardian. You got a big dog incoming. Hold them off while Mithrax works. Oh boy. Taking energy readings are spiking. Looks like you ain't done yet. This is a tactic of desperation. You near victory, Guardian. Glad we called you in for this one. We'd have been goners without you. I have located the prisoners. We are nearly ready for extraction. Gotcha. As soon as the Guardian secures the hatch, we'll get everyone the hell out of here. I'm here. In position? I have located the prisoners. It's a lockdown. We're trapped. I'm on it.
warned you. Where's Amanda? Amanda, come in. Amanda. Are you there? And so, once again, the words of the speaker ring true. Devotion inspires bravery. Bravery leads to sacrifice. Sacrifice leads to death. Whilst it's clear that the main story beat here is the death of Amanda Holiday, I do want to take just a moment to focus on Aramis's actions, because here there is a direct betrayal of the witness, and I think there's no way that it or one of its commanders, disciple or lesser, wouldn't know about it. I think that this action will have repercussions going forward into future seasons, but I think if nothing else it also means that Aramis may be switching sides. If she does so, she may be helping to ensure that what remains of the free thinkers amongst the fallen suddenly join our cause. Whilst she talks a lot about how she despises us and the whole of humanity, it's clear that she no longer is truly aligned with the witness. A miscalculation on its part perhaps, but regardless, this moment will have greater consequences going forward. Whether those consequences are purely for Eremis or for the entirety of the Elixni people as a whole is still to be seen. But this is a moment to remember. Much as the focus of the loss of Amanda is going to be our immediate takeaway from this, the political and general war side ramifications of this moment matter as well. The aftermath of our loss, though, is not something suffered in silence. Upon our return to the farm, we're met with a vigil, a message of conviction, and a message of comfort. Devotion. Bravery. Sacrifice. Devotion. Bravery. Sacrifice. Guardian, Zavala grieves, and... Mizrax is recovering in the infirmary. How do you want to proceed? We have to regroup. Bury Amanda. And put her killers in the ground. They'll be expecting you. Good. Think with your head, not your heart. Grief is poor counsel. And yours is better? <sighs> Make arrangements for Amanda. The Guardian and I will handle it from here. If that's your wish. It is. I know you want it too. Vengeance. You'll be the first to know when it's time. I have lived for centuries upon centuries, Guardian. Though death has not lost its sting, it is a ritual whose movements are familiar to me. It has become easier to bear. But seeing loss twist the faces of those around me. Zavala, my brother, that is not. Amanda's absence will be felt deeply by those of us who knew her. Despair will be at our side where a friend once stood. So while it does not lighten the burden, let us hold this pain together. And when you lift your eyes, may you look only upon kind faces. I need to focus on the Queen's Guard now. When the time comes to strike back, we must all be strong. As strong as Amanda Holiday. Of all the people here, I fear the most for Crow in this moment. His final words on the matter sounded a whole lot more like Aldrin than Crow, and I worry about how this is going to affect him. Crow thinks a lot more with his heart than his head, and he was fond of Amanda. More importantly, 
His actions in the past have led to death when he has been reckless and rash. I fear that this may be one of those moments where he charges headlong into something and doesn't truly think out the entirety of the operation at stake. It's clear that that will be next week's story beat, if anything, and more importantly than that, it's something where Crow will face his own moral dilemma. As for Zavala, his loss is total and devastating, but I don't believe that his actions will change significantly, at least in this season, given how he's reacted to grief before. Whether it's Cade, or Sophia, or Amanda, when he's done grieving privately, he'll continue to do as he always does. He'll hold us all together. Zavala is, in many ways, the pillar upon which all of us lean and rely. This is, of course, to say nothing of how recent events compound the tragedy on screen before us. The big question from this mission and this week's story is ultimately this. The use of the phrase, devotion, bravery, sacrifice, is often used to point towards a guardian. Its repeated use in these last few moments poses an obvious question to us. Will Amanda Holiday rise again as a guardian? It's unknown, but I think the possibility is a strong one, and I think the narrative implications for it certainly are worth exploring. What I would say is that regardless of whether or not Amanda is risen again, we need to remember a crucial fact. She will not be Amanda any more than Crow was Aldrin. Guardians lose their memories of their past lives when they're resurrected. Whilst the spirit of the individual at their core is no different, their outward personalities can be wildly different, and many do not go by the same name they previously had, unless they're fortunate enough to have it on their body, such as Anna Bray was. If Amanda does return, she will not be the same person. I also wanted to point out one last thing, which is something from way back in the Red War campaign, I think pertains to and demonstrates something in this moment very well. It's a small moment between Hawthorne and Zavala in the Battle of the Last City. Take a look at this little moment here. Well, this changes things. I'll work on this. You need to get moving. Ikora, Cade is in place and I'm en route. Good luck, Guardian. Now, needless to say, Hawthorne has no ghost, but the title of Guardian has been applied to her here regardless, but it's Guardian with a lowercase g instead of a capital G. It's a way of signifying that the idea of what a Guardian is goes beyond the use of paracausal power, a class of Titan, Hunter or Warlock, and the use of a ghost. It's a way of saying that all those who defend others and stand as protectors of the last city are worthy of the title. I think this logic extends well to Amanda. She may have died lightless, but Amanda was always a guardian, nonetheless. As for my thoughts on the mission, I think it's only fair to render an opinion after next week, because what Bungie has done here is set up some massive stakes. Crow is now searching for revenge and for a definitive moment to strike back but we still don't have a main villain of this season for him to actually get revenge against, and we still don't know what the Shadow Legion is doing with the prisoners they're capturing. These are important questions. With all this going on at once, there's a lot of things to tie up. This is the time for further escalation in the story, and I think if Bungie can land the story well next week, then it will represent a solid season. Granted, it's a shorter season than most, given that it arrives alongside the major release of Lightfall, but that was a given from the beginning. Here's hoping Bungie can pull that one out of the bag. For now, though, the Tower has lost yet another hero. May she also journey to the stars. But that's it from me for now. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and leave a like. And, of course know that you can leave your comments down below in the comments section. If you want more Destiny lore content, go ahead and hit subscribe, and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. But as per usual, know that your viewership as always is quite enough for me, and that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Rodasia Adastra. I'll see you starside.